Now first, you probably already know that germs are everywhere, and it's impossible for humans to get rid of them. These tiny creatures train our immune system. We're becoming stronger when our organism constantly faces bacteria and improves its protection skills. So don't worry about what you see next. (laughs) Welcome to one of the favorite places among bacteria and microbes – hotel rooms. Yes, they seem to be so clean, but in some ways, they're more dangerous than a garbage dump. Everything is dirty at the landfill, and you're afraid to touch anything. But the dirt in hotel rooms is almost invisible. Germs are waiting for you here, and there are a lot of them. So the first problems appear already in the elevator. The buttons on the panel are swarming with various bacteria. Suppose no one cleans them with a disinfectant. In that case, these buttons become the arena where billions of microbes multiply and devour each other. Take a look at an ordinary apartment building. There are elevators too. The same people live in this house, transmitting the same germs when they touch the elevator buttons. Your body encounters these microbes often and quickly develops the needed protection. But different people stay in hotels. A guy from some African country can bring a bacterium that will be dangerous for a girl from cold Norway. Therefore, after you touch the button, wash your hands with a soap or disinfectant. So, the elevator opens its doors and you walk towards your room. Watch out! There's another hot spot ahead. See that door handle? This area is another beloved playground for germs. How many people have touched it before you? How long has it been since it was washed? Do you know why such a handle is more dangerous than a toilet seat? Most of all, microbes accumulate on our fingers and palms. When we don't wash them, we transfer a million bacteria from one place to another by touching the surfaces of different objects. So the best way is to touch the door handle with the same hand you use to press the button in the elevator. As soon as you enter the room, wash your hands. The good news is that hotel staff clean bathrooms and toilets much better than the rest of the room. So you're a bit safer here. But still, take a good look at the corners of the bathroom and the tiles. If you see black spots somewhere, it means there's mold. This thing can cause allergic reactions like runny nose and eye irritation. Mold can be pretty dangerous, but hotel staff usually watch it closely. So it's unlikely that there will be something like this in your room unless it's a cheap hotel. You don't stay there, do you? Oh, by the way, did you know that toilet paper in a public toilet contains more germs than the toilet lid? You make a mistake if you cover the seat with pieces of that paper. First, many people touch it which means they transfer bacteria onto it. Secondly, dirty little splashes get on the roll when someone flushes the toilet. Microbes feel more comfortable living on soft paper than on the hard surfaces of the toilet. So don't put it on the seat. But if you see a metal or plastic cover on the roll, you're lucky, since the roll is protected from germs. Then, after you've done your business and washed your hands thoroughly, you have two options. Wipe your hands with a paper towel or use a hand dryer. It doesn't matter what you choose, both variants have a lot of germs. But if you use the dryer, bacteria will fly all over the room. So better grab a towel. Okay, you come out of the bathroom and find yourself in a danger zone. Don't think that all germs there are harmless. Some of the most common bacteria in hotels cause intestinal infections. If you don't want to spend the rest of your vacation or business trip next to or on the toilet, get ready to fight colonies of tiny parasites. The first thing you need to do is wash those glasses and cups with soap. Some travelers carry their own mugs with them, which is a good idea. Then look around and ask yourself, which places do people touch the most? These are the TV remote control, coffee machine, fridge, door handles, tables, hair dryer, and windows. But relax, you don't need to do the cleaning instead of the hotel staff. It's enough to have wet wipes with a powerful disinfectant. Wipe the surface of all these objects. Perhaps you worry in vain, and the hotel carefully monitors how clean the rooms are. (laughs) Or you can tell the manager you want to have your room cleaned again. So you've wiped all the surfaces and jumped into bed tired. Unfortunately, you're not the only one to rest on that soft mattress. You have a huge company of bacteria. 
Of course, washing pillowcases and bed linen destroys germs, but what about the bedspread? Most likely, nobody washes it. Removing germs from the tissue is difficult, so you'll probably have to put up with it. But the thing you shouldn't accept is bed bugs. If you notice dark spots on your mattress, this is most likely the waste left by bed bugs. You're not hungry, are you? I don't want to spoil your appetite. The insects themselves can hide deep in the mattress. They can sleep there for months and then wake up to satisfy their hunger. While you're resting, they come out and bite your legs. If you notice small red spots on your skin in the morning, then bed bugs have, well, kissed you. The bites of these beetles are not dangerous. Some people may have a mild allergic reaction in the form of irritation on the skin. But the problem is that some bed bugs can get into your clothes or things. Then you'll bring them home. These creatures multiply rapidly. Therefore, if you don't want a colony of biting bugs in your house, then wash your clothes, clean your luggage, and go to the shower. But before that, ask the hotel manager to refund your money because bed bugs are unex. By the way, even if the room is squeaky clean, it doesn't mean there are no bed bugs in it. Perhaps previous guests brought them. So your bed has no black spots and you have wiped all the dangerous surfaces. That's it, you're safe. But try to walk on the floor wearing slippers or thick socks, as the floor is also a source of dirt. You spend several nights in the hotel and finally return to a clean and safe place, your home. Unfortunately, your house can also have many germs you don't see. Do you like to have fun with friends and play video games? Do you remember when the last time you cleaned the gamepad was? All your friends have held it in their hands, which means you've collected all of their microbes there. Your kitchen cutting board. How thoroughly do you wash it? It's not enough just to splash it with water, especially if you cut meat and vegetables. You can cut some squash, and its germs will stick to the surface. Then you quickly wash the board and put it back in place. But the germs haven't gone away. They're still firmly attached to the surface, waiting for you to cut bread. Then they'll jump onto the food and get into your stomach. Uh, how's that appetite doing? Still good? Another dangerous place is a dish sponge. Even if you use a good detergent, germs still accumulate there. The best way to get rid of them is to change sponges once a week. And now you'll see a paradise for bacteria. A place with an ideal cold temperature and a lot of food from fresh to spoiled. Hey, it's your fridge! There you put products that you bring from the supermarket. Hundreds of people could touch them with their hands, leaving millions of germs. Therefore, don't forget to wash your fridge often. And also, keep any meat away from packaged products, because germs on a rare steak multiply and spoil it quickly. Well, perhaps you're too worried about your health now. If so, then you should remember the words from the beginning of the video. Let me quote. You probably already know that Germans are everywhere. Wait, that's not it. Ah, sorry. Neighborhood watch plans are a fantastic way to get your community looking out for each other. If you're going on a Christmas getaway, ask your neighbors to keep an eye on your place. They can do this through simple activities like moving your letters from the mailbox or turning on a light once in a while. This can make it seem like your house is busy. Not only does this reduce the risk of unwanted guests, but some insurance companies might even cut you a deal if you're part of a local plan. That extra money could come in handy for Christmas presents. Just saying. Burglars also need to get pretty creative during the holiday season, too. There have been cases of crooks melting locks on doors, windows, and sheds. It sounds a bit extreme but it can happen. Make sure your locks are working, more so during this time of the year. Also, think about installing wood or steel composite doors that won't be as easily damaged. Store your car or spare house keys somewhere safe, away from curious eyes, in case any unwanted guests come knocking. Another good idea is to mark your stuff. That's because burglars hate personalized items. If your belongings have your name, phone number, or address on them, they're a tough item to sell. Plus, it's easier for law enforcement to spot your things. So whenever possible, put your personal touch on your valuables through carving or embroidery. 
It will also increase the odds of your goods finding their way back to you in case they get taken away. Here's another smart way to make it seem like you're home while you're out and about if you can't rely on your neighbors. Use timers for your lights and leave the radio on. You can even leave an ironing board with a pile of clothes nearby to make it look like you just stepped out. Just remember to turn the iron off. During this time of the year, your vehicle needs some extra care too. With people out shopping for Christmas presents and stashing them in their trunks, those cars become prime targets. Never leave your car alone with your Christmas haul inside. Always park in a well-lit spot or on a driveway to scare off opportunistic thieves. And you know those frosty mornings when you leave your engine running to defrost your windshield? Forget about it. Leaving your car unattended with the keys in the ignition is pretty dangerous. Most of us think that a beware of dog sign is a good way to keep unwanted strangers at bay, but during the day, it can actually signal that there's no alarm set around your house, since dogs can trigger sensors unnecessarily. Burglars might think it's an opportunity to sneak in. So if you don't have a guard dog, maybe reconsider that sign. However, you might want to set a free guard dog skill on Alexa. You can remotely activate it to make a barking and growling dog noise. That should make anyone think twice about breaking in. Browsing through received Christmas cards at the end of the year is pretty special. Burglars love it too, more so when you toss the envelopes in the bin. It's their free pass to all sorts of personal information about you and your family. Make sure to rip up any piece of paper or packaging before taking them to the trash. Also, if your floor is a mess of cards and letters, it's a clear sign to burglars that you're not home. You might want to get a cage for your letterbox to hide your mail and prevent letterbox fishing. If you're heading out of town for the holidays, it's also a good idea to tidy up your house before departing. Leaving suitcases and bags out signal your house might be empty, so it may become an easier target. Hide them under the bed or in the garage before leaving the house. Also, think about your family calendar. If you've got your birthday dates displayed where outsiders can see them, you might be in for an unpleasant surprise visit. Try to switch to online calendars. They're easier to be kept private. I know, I know, we all want our Christmas trees by the window for that picture-perfect cozy look. But the problem is, it also gives thieves a good look at your presents. Lights on your tree can also tell them if you're home or not. So maybe use a timer for the lights and change it up every day. And don't forget those stockings. Keep them out of sight. You can close your blinds upwards as well to make sure people aren't spying. Waiting until the last minute to wrap your presents can be pretty stressful by itself. It's not the safest move when it comes to your security either. Unwrapped gifts are the perfect surprise for burglars because they can see their value up front without having to unwrap them. Try covering each one individually and skip the gift bags. Burglars usually make their escape on foot, so they'll steer clear of the bulky bags. Once you've unwrapped your presents with your friends and family by your side, make sure to store your new stuff somewhere safe. If you've had your Christmas vacation booked for some time, you might be excited to share your holiday joy. Just like you might be excited to share this video with your friends, which you totally should. But be mindful about oversharing personal information on social media. Posting pictures of your expensive dinners abroad can tip off potential thieves that your home is empty. Use your privacy settings wisely and be careful who can see your posts. Buying alarms and motion sensors for the darker corners of your home is also a great idea, though it does take a bit more planning and financial investment. However, the average cost of a burglary is on average about $3,000, so consider making the investment. Don't underestimate those doggy doors and cat flaps. Some people might even be able to sneak into your house through the bigger ones. And while CCTV is great, burglars tend to be sly. They will themselves monitor your house for a while, looking for patterns and potential hiding spots like bushes or dark areas. Plus, during the holidays, they'll be on the lookout for missing cars as a sign that a house is vacant. It's not just your house or vehicle that needs protecting. When you're out shopping, try to stick to daytime if you can. If you have to go at night, try not to go alone. 
Also, don't carry loads of cash. It's better to pay with a credit or a check when you can. If you do have cash, though, keep it in your front pocket. It will be easier to monitor. If you lose your credit card or notice anything funny going on in your banking app, call the credit card company right away. To buy presents in advance to avoid overloading yourself with bags, you need to see where you're going and move freely to avoid accidents. Even better, switch to buying gifts online. Just make sure to stick to reputable websites. They'll take better care of your personal information. If you do have to get some stuff from the local mall, for instance, watch out for strangers who might approach you. Especially around this time of year, scammers might try to distract you and steal your valuables. During the holiday season, you might get all jolly and let more people into your home, especially if you're planning to host larger parties. Be mindful, though, that some out there might pretend to be friendly neighbors bearing gifts just to sneak a peek at your house and valuables. Keep an eye out for uninvited visitors, especially if they seem a bit off. If you're heading out but need someone to water your plants, feed your pets, or handle your curtains, don't be tempted to hide spare keys in plain sight. It's more obvious than you think. Burglars are clever and they know all the usual hiding spots, like under flower pots or on top of door frames. Instead, give those spare keys to someone you trust, like a family member or a neighbor. You check into your hotel room, connect to Wi Fi, jump on the bed, and post 15 photos of your new window view. When the initial surge of excitement is gone, you notice a suspicious blinking light on your big TV. Could it be that someone is watching you? Or have you just seen too many spy movies? Well, hidden cameras come in all shapes and sizes. Large ones are easy to spot, but the small ones can be really sneaky and inconspicuous. They can be hiding behind furniture, in decorations or vents, and anywhere else you'll have trouble noticing. There are even special cameras that can be hidden in everyday movable objects like alarm clocks, picture frames, vases, and lamps. Check to see if these objects are facing at a strange angle or if they're positioned to get the best view of your room or bathroom. The easiest way to spot a hidden cam is to look for the lens reflection because all cameras come with lenses. Turn off the lights and slowly scan the room with a flashlight, laser pointer, or a special wireless spy cam detector. It comes with infrared scanning lights and one illuminating light. When you find a reflective red spot, you gotta turn on the flashlight to help check if there is a hidden camera. Definitely check the vents along with any other holes and gaps in the walls or ceiling. Some advanced detectors even show you what the camera is seeing, making it way easier to spot and disable. The detectors only work on cameras that are turned on and working normally, though. Your mobile phone can also help you find some hidden threats. Turn on Bluetooth and walk around. See if any unknown devices pop up on the screen. Another idea is to install a network scanner app that shows all devices that are connected to the Wi-Fi network you're using at the hotel. When it's done scanning, study the list for devices called something like IP camera or cam. Plus, you can put your phone on selfie mode, turn off the light and close the curtains and look around the room slowly while focusing on the screen. Keep an eye out for purple or white lights on the screen. You can play detective some more and call your friend or family member and start walking around your room. Secret cameras should emit a sort of radio frequency. It will most likely interfere with your phone call signal. If you start hearing any weird noises while you're on the phone in a certain area of your room, make sure to inspect it carefully. Check out the light switches, electrical outlets, lamps, and other objects you normally wouldn't pay attention to. If they look a bit crooked, have a hole, or seem misplaced, it could be a sign that someone tampered with them. Many spy devices need wires, and whoever installed them had to hide those wires, often behind the vinyl baseboard. That's why the place where the floor and the wall meet is another area you should check. Ridges, bumps, or discoloration could be a sign there's a microphone hiding there. The same goes for spots on ceilings and walls. 
even if they're not larger than a coin. If you do find a hidden camera or something looking suspicious, don't shy away and let the hotel administration or your booking service know about it. Don't try to touch or move the device yourself. If the hotel denies everything, contact local law enforcement. After you've scanned the room for cameras, check out the mirrors. Someone could be watching you from the other side. First, see if the mirror is built into the wall or can be adjusted. If the mirror is semi-transparent, it will be built into the wall. You can do a simple test to check the mirror. Press your fingertip against the glass and push firmly enough to leave a fingerprint as you move your finger away. Study the fingerprint. If there is a small gap between the print and the mirror where the glass should be, then it's just a mirror. On a semi-transparent mirror, there will be no gap. Another way to check if your mirror is semi-transparent is simply to tap the glass. If someone is watching you from the other side, the mirror will make an empty sound. A double mirror needs a brighter light on the other side than on yours. Get close to it and cup your hands around your eyes. Do you see some light behind the mirror? If so, you might have an unwanted audience. Before you leave your room or go to bed, make sure every door is securely locked. By every door, I mean not only the entrance to the room, but also the door leading to the terrace, if you have one. You can bring a portable door lock with you for extra security if you're staying in. You could also start a little DIY project and wrap a belt or a bag strap around the arm that pushes the door shut. Buckle it up and wrap it around several times for an extra layer of protection. Another idea for when you're about to nap or go to sleep is to build a pyramid of stuff by the door. Glasses and mugs will do perfectly. If someone tries to get inside while you're sleeping, there'll be some serious noise. Intruders prefer to keep it low-key, so they're highly likely to give up on robbing you straight away. If you travel with some valuables and don't feel comfortable leaving them around the room, you could put them in the safe inside your room. But because those safes use passcodes instead of physical locks, someone from the hotel has to know the master code to unlock it, just in case. So, you can bring your own safe with you instead. You can find the ones looking like books on Amazon, for example. They're made of strong metal and textured paper. They come with a combination lock and have enough room to fit your passports, cash, and jewelry. In case you have to leave your laptop in the room and want to make sure no one plugs in a USB drive to steal your data, here's what you can do. Leave a bottle of water or some other item next to the USB port. Measure the distance. Let's say it's one thumb length away. For someone to plug in their device in the laptop, they need to move the bottle. You can take it one step further and drop a pen parallel to the laptop under a certain angle. You can measure the angle with your smartwatch or phone using the Compass app. Again, if someone moves it, you'll know. Even something as simple as a please do not disturb sign can help you figure out if someone entered your room while you were away. Make it look like you left in a rush and the sign accidentally stuck between the door and the door frame. If you come back and the sign is hanging freely, then someone must have ignored it and tried to disturb you. In that case, you can contact reception and ask to send someone to enter the room with you to keep you safe. If you care about the cleanliness of your room as much as you do about your belongings and your personal safety, this one's for you. Hotel housekeeping workers normally have up to 20 rooms to take care of on an 8-hour shift. It means they'll have no more than 30 minutes for your room. It gives them enough time to make the bed, clean the floors in the room and the bathroom, empty the trash bins, and dust all surfaces. But they rarely have the time to take care of smaller objects like light switches, door and drawer handles, and remotes. And yes, these are exactly the objects you'll be in contact with the most. They can actually have more germs than the toilet. So if you want to be sure those germs won't land on your hands, Bring enough antibacterial wipes to clean all those things before you touch them. Wow, 
If you're a lucky owner of a brand new iPhone 12, or you've just updated your operating system to iOS 14, don't be afraid of that creepy green or orange dot that pops up in the upper right corner. Green dot shows you're using your camera, and orange indicates you're using the microphone. Let's say you have TikTok in the background that might passively use both camera and mic. These dots will show it. It can help control the battery life. To make your iPhone louder, go to Settings, Music, and find the equalizer. It's called EQ in the menu. Late night option will make your phone about 20% louder than it used to be. You can also create a unique vibration for any of your contacts. Go to Settings, Sounds, and open the ringtone settings. You usually have the default vibration, but if you scroll down a bit, you're going to see the Custom section. Tap any rhythm you like and save it. You can set it for any of your contacts. If customized vibration isn't enough and you still miss your granny's calls, try to customize the flash. Turn it on as an extra notification for incoming calls. Go to General Settings, choose the Accessibility section, and head to Hearing. Turn on the LED flash for alerts. You're never going to miss that call again. If you press the space button and start sliding, you'll have a cursor. It can be handy if you want to find a typo or correct some word in the notes or whatever text you're dealing with. Now, if you typed a very long message, but it turns out you need to get rid of it, you can literally shake it off. Just shake the phone to undo the typing. Whenever you need to choose more than one icon, Tap and hold only one, and, with the second finger, add all the other icons you need. This one's not going to work if you have an iPhone 6 or older. The newest iPhones have a super convenient feature that is helpful when you need to go from one application to another. Look at that line at the bottom of the screen. Slide left or right and find the app you need. No more double tapping and notification center. If you like falling asleep to your favorite music or to another YouTube video, just like I do, go to Clock, tap the timer, and select When the Time Ends section. Scroll down until you see Stop Playing button. This feature shuts down all the media apps, such as music, any windows that play sounds or video, and even the YouTube app. Pretty handy if you ever woke up at 3 a.m. in the middle of some random video that was auto-played. Yeah. We're all used to messengers, but iMessages are fun. Press the send button to add different wow effects to your message. The bubble section has four features. Invisible ink makes it impossible to read the message unless you wipe it with a finger. Slide the finger from right to left and back to kind of clear it. With the gentle effect, the letters seem really tiny at the start, but then they grow larger. The loud effect, vice versa, makes them pop at the start so they appear way larger, but the size goes back to normal in a few seconds. The slam effect speaks for itself. The message literally slams the screen. Tap the right button called the screen effects. It's fun too. For example, it has echo effects, so your friend's screen's going to be overwhelmed with echoing texts. Slide right for a lot more different effects. There's definitely one for touching text you're about to send. The iPhone font has different sizes as well. To make it bigger or smaller, go to the Display and Brightness section in the setting. Tap the text size and adjust it the way you like. You can take a selfie not only with the volume button on your phone, but simply by hitting that button on your headphones. This hack is for iPhone users, but many Androids can use it too. Mind that it usually works with original headphones. iPhones may not have the most durable batteries, but they beat everyone when it comes to photo quality. Turn on the grid in the camera settings. Go to General, choose Camera to enable the grid. It can help you make better compositions in the photo. If you like typing with one hand, it's probably high time you set the right keyboard. While typing, hold the globe button. Three keyboards will appear. The one on the left is used whenever you type holding your phone in the left hand. The one in the middle is for both hands, and the one on the right is for typing with the right hand only. If you like writing long, romantic letters in your notes, but don't want anyone to read them, set a pass to any of your notes. 
there are two ways to do that, depending on your iPhone model. For iPhone 6, you gotta slide from right to left and see three icons – lock, folder, and bin. Use the bin if the romantic letter is bad, and the lock to protect it from peaky eyes. Set the pass, but make sure you actually remember it – you can't delete it. If this didn't work, just tap and hold the note itself, and you'll see the password bar in the drop-down menu. Set the pass, and nobody's gonna know about the romantic letters to Jane you're writing at night. Newest models of iPhone support the coolest feature ever. Now you can make a screenshot of the whole browser page in one file. To do this, press the volume up button plus the power button. If you need to find some special word combination while you're reading an online article, Go to the search bar and type the word you're interested in. You're going to see three sections – Google search, bookmarks and history, and on this page. Tap the last one. The word you need is going to be highlighted in yellow. Plus, there will be a special navigation bar on the bottom with the arrows up and down to look for the keyword easily. Don't forget to refresh your iPhone's RAM every now and again. It can help your device work better and faster. To do that, you got to drill down deep. Go to Setting, General, Accessibility, Assistive Touch, and turn it on. Press plus, then minus, and then the power button. You'll see the power off bar. Press the assistive touch and hold the home button. The RAM's refresh now. If you see the Enter Pass notification after you did it, it means you did it all right. Assistive Touch can also help you set new functions to simple taps. Go to Settings. General, Accessibility, and in the Assistive Touch section, you can change any commands in the Custom Actions menu. For a double tap, I chose the screenshot, since a combination of Home plus Power button seems a bit inconvenient. To make a screenshot, tap the Accessibility menu circle twice. People with iPhones don't need a separate app for QR readers, since all the iPhones have them built in. Turn on the camera and point it to the code. You'll see the pop-up window on the top of the screen. Tap the window, and you'll go straight to whatever link the QR code had. If it doesn't work, enable the Scan QR Codes function in the camera settings. You can actually set any song you like for the alarm clock. Go to the alarm and press Edit in the right upper corner. Tap the time you want to change the melody for. In the sound section, choose Pick a Song and go for any song added to your library. Disclaimer: Your best loved song will probably turn into your worst enemy after a couple of mornings you use it as an alarm. One of the most hated problems of all iPhone users is when you run out of memory. Even if you delete the photos, there's still not enough space. Go to Settings, iPhone Storage, and make sure that recently deleted photos are actually deleted. If not, delete them in the storage sections. Note that your messages can contain heavy files, so you can restrict how long the message can be stored. In the message history, tap the Keep Messages button. It's forever by default, but you can keep them for one year or even only 30 days. If you deal with many documents to be signed, this hack can help you sign them without even printing and scanning. Take a screenshot of the document you want to sign, then tap the screenshot to make changes. Tap the plus button in the right lower corner. Choose the signature button in the toolbar, and here we go! Sign the document with your finger, and save the changes by pressing the button marked Done. And so are we! 11% of people on vacation at a hotel room have found hidden cameras in their accommodation. Imagine how much higher the number would be if more people knew what they were looking for and how to do it. So how do you detect these hidden cameras? Let's say you've arrived at a random location for your vacation. You're renting out a lovely apartment. Take out your phone. It'll be an essential and beneficial source for finding clues of hidden cameras. Turn on your Bluetooth. Take a walk around the apartment, your room, bathroom, kitchen, and the passageway to the apartment. Monitor your phone to see if you can detect any unknown devices that appear on your screen. If something comes up, that's a good indication for a further thorough search. 
Even if you don't pick up anything on the Bluetooth, it's still a good idea to thoroughly search your accommodation anyway. Go to each room, take a close look around, and check the corners of the walls and ceiling, keeping an eye out for any suspicious holes. Holes are an unlikely place to find any cameras, unless you're in a haunted house from an old horror film. But it's still a good idea to check, regardless of how obvious it sounds. Now inspect all the movable objects, lamps, radios, television, shelves, and whatever else you can find sitting around. Check to see if they're facing at a strange angle, like if they were aimed towards your bed or bathroom. Once you've inspected everything with the lights on, turn them off. Some cameras may have small LED lights that can be in a range of colors. Go over the same area again, looking out for any suspicious lights. Make sure to check that the fire alarm is just a fire alarm. It's a common hiding place for cameras, as the fire alarm always has a blinking light. Approach the air vents and inspect closely. They would be capable of hiding larger cameras inside. Now that we've done a quick look in the dark, get a flashlight, or use your phone's flashlight, and shine that light around the room for an even more thorough search. Carefully look for any tiny glints of a camera screen. The reflection of the light will be minimal, so pay close attention to anything that glistens. Focus carefully on the inanimate objects in the room, reviewing every angle closely, even the susceptible plants. You can also utilize the selfie mode of your phone to detect infrared light sources in the dark, as it doesn't filter them out. These light signals can be found from night vision cameras, which rely on their infrared waves to detect heat signatures when it's dark. Put your phone on selfie mode, leave the light off, and look around the room slowly while focusing on the screen. It'll be awkward moving around the dark room while looking at the screen in selfie mode, but try to keep an eye out for purple or white lights on the screen. Now that we've checked for cameras, it's time to review the mirrors. Cameras could be behind them, and someone could also be watching from the other side. First, determine whether they're built into the wall or can be adjusted. If the mirror is semi-transparent, it will be built into the wall. These aren't common in your bedroom typically, which would lead to suspicion. You can do a simple test to check the mirror. Simply press your fingertip onto the glass, pushing firm enough to ensure that there will be a fingerprint as you move your finger away. Focus closely on the fingerprint. If there is a small gap between the fingerprint and the mirror where the glass should be, then it's just a mirror. On a semi-transparent mirror, there will be no gap. The fingernail test is used similarly, detecting if there is a glass gap between the end of the fingernail and the mirror. However, both tests may be complex depending on the lighting in the room and the position the mirror is facing, so it's not a definitive test in all situations. Semi-transparent mirrors are generally built into the wall to ensure they work without being detected. The wall must completely cover the edges. The lighting on the hidden side requires a brighter light source than your side of the wall for it to work. Put your eyes right up to the glass to further confirm what kind of mirror you're dealing with. Cup your hands around your eyes, ensuring there is as little amount of light from your side, and look through to the other side. If there is a slight indication of light behind the mirror, or if you can see outlines of objects behind it, you have a semi-transparent mirror. A semi-transparent mirror will have an empty wall behind it, so another method to check is to simply tap the glass. The sound of tapping on a semi-transparent mirror will produce an empty sound. If privacy is still a considerable concern after learning how easy it can be to hide cameras, further options are accessible. You have many options for applications available on your phone. Some will review the Wi-Fi network to determine any suspicious behavior in the area, as all cameras and surveillance equipment will connect to the Wi-Fi. These apps help you detect the concerning names of devices and identify the brand and model of the devices, providing further confirmation there is a hidden camera nearby. With the many application devices available, Many anti-bug detectors can find hidden cameras, the body of wires, GPS, etc. There is a wide range of these detectors to choose from, depending on how much you want to spend. Security cameras have come a long way in recent history. In the world we live in now, you can find a camera in any shape and size. Anyone can purchase or modify a camera, 
and even place a camera where they like on their property. They are so advanced and inconspicuous that one could be watching you right now. The first surveillance cameras were installed in 1927. From then, surveillance in all forms has become more prominent throughout the world. The security camera's evolution has developed significantly. More so recently since the 1990s, when the development and variations have increased each year enormously. The application and the number of security cameras in public areas have grown so much that in 2021, there were estimated to be 1 billion security cameras worldwide. And considering most people have a phone or a computer device that more than likely has a camera attached, you can assume there will soon be more cameras than human beings on this planet. And if that's not concerning enough, there are also more secretive cameras out there that you're not even aware of, inconspicuously watching your every move while on holiday, at work, at the gym, or even in your own home. Cameras today are so advanced that there are many out in the streets with facial recognition technology. Some are computer controlled, identifying an object, tracking it on its system, and categorizing the objects in its field of view. The definition in these cameras is so powerful, they can zoom in and focus on the smallest of objects. So when accessing an ATM, be sure to always cover the keypad when entering your PIN code. Hidden cameras are used discreetly, recording people while they're unaware. They can be wireless and fit inside all kinds of small spaces, like fire alarms, televisions, and many more objects that could fit a camera as small as a USB slot making them all the more difficult to detect. Some places to be wary of hidden cameras are when you're moving into a new rental accommodation and when you're on vacation. There have been reports of cameras found in hotels and many other forms of accommodation. It's possible to find places all around the world with hidden devices. In some countries and regions, it's legal for a proprietor to have hidden cameras and other devices on their premises. But just because they may be within their legal rights in some instances to monitor their property, you still have the rights of your privacy and safety. You also have the option to talk to your host or landlord and question them as to whether there are hidden cameras. If you feel confident in doing this, when you pose the question to them, look closely to see how they react, taking careful attention to see how they respond and in what manner. If they're shocked by the question or simply don't say a word, it may be an indication to leave the premises immediately. But if you don't want that awkward exchange, we hope that we've provided enough tips to help you where we can. Endless hot deserts seem lifeless at first glance. But among these sands, you can meet dangerous and sometimes creepy creatures. Some of them can only cause health problems, but some can stay in your memory forever. Let's get to know them, starting with dangerous ones and finishing with real nightmares. So, you're walking through a desert and see a big teddy bear with open hands. You understand that it's probably a mirage, but still, you come closer. You were right. It's not a plush toy, but a giant cactus. There's something strange about it. Thanks to some strange fluff, the branches resemble the arms of a teddy bear. However, this is not fluff, but thousands of thin needles, and they are the reason you shouldn't come closer. The cactus is called the Jumping Choya, or Teddy Bear Choya. It grows in the desert areas of Arizona and in the northern part of Mexico. Don't worry, this cactus won't attack you, but it will cling to your skin or clothes if you touch it. Such a fur coat protects the cactus from animals, creates shade, and saves it from heat. The lateral branches are the most important parts of the plant as they carry out photosynthesis and accumulate a large amount of moisture inside. So, despite all the danger, the cactus can be helpful for desert wanderers. And the danger here is needles. If you look closer at them, you will see they have the shape of hooks. One touch, and hundreds of thorns are already in your finger. It's pretty difficult to get rid of them and the needles cause unpleasant, painful sensations. But the coolest thing about this cactus is the way it reproduces. The plant clones itself in a new place. When animals and people pass the jumping choya and touch it, 
the cactus gives them a small piece of itself, along with the needles. As soon as you throw this piece to the ground, it takes root and starts growing. The degree of danger is rising. The next monster from the desert is running toward us, and that is an ostrich. Many think these animals are cowards hiding their heads in the sand. You will most likely change your mind if you're unlucky enough to meet one. Usually, ostriches are not aggressive, but you should run if you come closer to their nest. On the other hand, you won't be able to do that because ostriches move at a speed of 43 miles per hour. You need a car to get away from them. They run and hit their enemy with their chests. There have been cases when ostriches attacked vans and caused significant damage to them. But the main danger these birds present is their powerful legs with sharp claws. They can deliver strong blows with them and even beat a prone opponent. So yes, if you see an ostrich in the distance, go the other way. This small spotted lizard lives underground almost all the time in the arid deserts of the southwestern US and northwestern Mexico. Sometimes, it goes outside to find lunch. It only seems cute, but in fact, it's a dangerous gila monster. Its thick skin protects the reptile from hawks, coyotes, and other predators. But its main protection is its venom. Snakes and spiders inject their toxins using long, needle-like fangs. The gila monster clamps down and chews the prey to spread the venom. And when it bites a person, it can keep its jaws closed for a long time. Getting rid of the animal is a tricky feat. People who have experienced the effects of the venom say it feels as if hot magma passes through the veins. Despite this, the lizard turned out to be useful for science. Doctors used its venom to create medicines for diabetes and obesity. The time has come. Now you're about to meet one of the creepiest creatures living in the desert. Be quiet and listen to the silence. Stand still, there's no one around. Suddenly, you hear some hissing coming from below. You lower your head and see it. A big yellow spider the size of a human palm with strong jaws and long legs hides in the shadow of your body. In horror, you run away from this monster, but it goes after you. It isn't easy to do it in this situation, but try to calm down. The creature isn't interested in you. It wants only your shadow to hide from the scorching sun. Anyway, it's better not to touch it. The powerful jaws of the camel spider can cause unpleasant sensations, to put it mildly. And, by the way, this creature isn't really a spider. Yeah, it belongs to the class of arachnids, but it's a separate species, Salpicid. It likes to bite. It's fearless and pretty aggressive. The spider preys on insects, lizards, rodents, and small birds. It can also move at a speed of 10 miles per hour. For their small size, this is very fast. You need to be a professional athlete to run away from it. Most often, you can find camel spiders in the deserts of the Middle East, but they also live in Mexico and the southwestern US. These runners are nocturnal and try to avoid the sun during the day so they are always hunting your shadow. By the way, they got their name because they often hide in the shadows of camels. You won't hide from them during the day, but they will also want to come after you at night, especially if you make a fire. Solpugids always run to the light in the hope of eating something. Some species of these spiders make a hissing sound to scare their enemies away. Now, let's calm down for a second and leave the hot desert. We're going into the humid tropics of Tanzania. Under tree bark, fallen leaves, and in dark caves, you can meet one of the most terrifying creatures on Earth, a tailless whip scorpion. Imagine a big scorpion without a tail with a flat body that looks like it has been pressed by something. It's similar to spiders, but has no venom glands and can't spin a web. This monster is silent and fast, but the scariest thing is its two front claws twice as long as the creature itself. Any prey it catches will never escape. Life in a dark cave has spoiled its eyesight, so the whip scorpion tries to avoid sunlight. 
During molting, it climbs up to the ceiling and slowly comes out of its old skin. Imagine directing your flashlight there and seeing small cocoons out of which pale spiders with excessively long legs crawl. If you really meet it, be calm and slowly go away as far as possible. Be careful. The flat scorpion can crawl under your clothes in a second and bite you in the stomach. And that's not the worst part. Okay, this is a joke. This pretty guy is one of the shyest and most harmless creatures among spiders and scorpions. It's afraid of you and will never attack. Many consider it beautiful and keep whip scorpions in glass terrariums. If you want such a pet, carefully watch it so that it doesn't run away from its house. If it happens, it will be pretty challenging to catch it again. In a matter of moments, it can get under your bed or go through gaps in the floor. Then it'll go to your neighbor's apartment through a ventilation system and scare people there. Okay, how about one more scorpion? It's not as creepy as the other creatures in this video, but it's the most venomous scorpion in the USA. This is the Arizona bark scorpion. The problem is that you can see it in the desert, in your home, or in the yard. These dangerous venomous beasts crawl into rooms and often sting people. One time is enough to cause pain, similar to a bee sting. But someone with an allergy may experience paralysis, breathing problems, and other health issues. Well, it's a nice Sunday afternoon and you're shopping at your regular grocery store when you stumble upon a bloated package in the fresh produce aisle. You check the product information. It seems well within its expiration date. Then why the unusual shape, you may wonder? The answer is not always straightforward. For some types of fresh products, such as meat, fish, or seafood, sometimes even salads and cheese, scientists came up with something called MAP, or Modified Atmosphere Packaging, to ensure that these types of products with a relatively short shelf life stay fresh for as long as possible. A combination of gases is introduced in the packaging. It happens even before the product reaches your local grocery store. A French professor at the Montpelier School of Pharmacy stumbled upon this method after he noticed that fruits tend to stay fresh for longer periods of time in low oxygen storage conditions. The types of gases in MAP's packaging can vary from product to product, but the main idea is to replace or reduce the content of oxygen. It's generally replaced with either nitrogen or carbon dioxide. Keep in mind that just because a bloated bag mm. of salad is within its expiration date, it doesn't mean it's always safe to eat. The gases inside the bag may very well be there for their own purpose, but they can also be a sign that the product is spoiled. That's why the best course of action when shopping would be to check if the product is not expired. If it's still within the day, mm -hmm. check for any unusual odors or damage to mm -hmm. the packaging. If something seems off, it's best not to risk it. You can reach out to hey. any of the store staff if you have any questions or concerns. Most supermarkets these days have a layout which allows for a logical shopping order, like buying non-perishable items first, then adding refrigerated or frozen products. Fruits and vegetables should come last since you won't want them at the bottom of your shopping cart. Nobody likes a squished tomato. While I'm on the subject of fruits and veggies, try to get them earlier in the morning if possible. Veggies that have been sitting out all day may lose some of their shape and texture, while others may be a bit wilted away. Quick tip on waste management, never buy more produce than you intend to use in a week. Most fruits and vegetables don't even last that long, so it's best not to give in to cravings. Shopping on a full stomach might help with that as well just as much as going shopping with a pre-made list of things you need to buy. Thoroughly inspecting the package of every product might save you some hustle later as well. Refrigerated products need to feel cold to the touch, whilst frozen ones need to be solid and with no sign of leakage. When you get home, make sure you refrigerate all the necessary items as soon as possible. Generally, they shouldn't be out of the refrigerator for more than two hours. Otherwise, their quality won't stay the same. Buying potted herbs from the grocery store may not be the first thing on your list, but it's surely something to consider. Not only are they available for a fraction of the cost, but they're also easy to grow and take care of. Just picture a nice herb garden right there on your balcony or even in the kitchen. Wouldn't that be nice? 
you'll always have fresh basil to top a mouth-watering pasta dish. Since you're still at the grocery store, pick up some coffee filters while you're at it. You may not have a machine at home that actually uses filters, but there are a lot more things you can use them for around the house. They can be used for straining liquids, safely stacking delicate china in your cupboards, or even polishing windows, or shoes for that matter. If your favorite fruits and vegetables are on sale, but buying large quantities would mean they go to waste, consider freezing them. You can stock up on items for smoothies, especially for the colder season when there are limited options for fresh fruits. And don't just grab the first thing on the shelf, especially if it's likely to go bad quickly. Stores restock their produce following a first-in, first-out layout. So the items at the back of the shelf will always be a tad bit fresher. The same goes for tea if you prefer it to coffee. Switch to buying loose-leaf tea, and you'll not only reduce the cost, you'll also be able to make your own homemade tea blends. Loose-leaf tea also has a stronger flavor than tea sold in tea bags. As for the other household stuff, stock up on items such as light bulbs, paper towels, or batteries. Chances are you'll always be needing at least one of these items, so it's best to buy them in larger quantities when on sale. They never go to waste, and let's face it, it's always annoying when you run out of batteries at home and your TV remote stops working. Hey, tell me about it. Try to reduce the number of times you go to the grocery store to buy just one item. It's inefficient, and most likely, you'll end up buying things that you don't actually need. Uh, That shopping list starts to make a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Another list worth making, the one containing whatever you have in the fridge. Try to create such a list at least twice a week. Meal planning for at least a week in advance will also help you reduce impulse buying. If you already know what you'll want for dinner on Wednesday, why add anything else to the card if it's unnecessary? At the same time, start getting creative with your leftovers. There's no need for them to go to waste when you can mix and match or add some additional herbs and flavors to spice them up. Store leftovers in transparent containers for added visibility. And don't be afraid to set out a leftover day during the week. It's also nice to look at them as ingredients rather than leftovers. Use extra leftover pasta or steamed vegetables for a frittata or an (laughs) omelette. Blend together cooked vegetables with some tomatoes to create a pasta sauce. Put together some wraps for the next day's lunch with anything from leftover cooked rice to meat and vegetables. Or, if you're really looking for the easiest method to save leftovers, you can always turn them into soup. Last night's vegetable side dish can turn into a wholesome lunch if you simply add a can of broth and blend it all together. Even a two-day-old loaf of bread can be salvaged if you cut it diagonally, sprinkle the slices with some herbs and olive oil, and pop them in the oven for a couple of minutes. You'll then have yourself some nice homemade croutons for that previously mentioned soup. A little label know-how never hurt anyone either. Be on the lookout for ingredients you've never heard of or those you can't pronounce. An item that usually has more than five ingredients listed on the packaging should be avoided. Even the way you carry your groceries in the supermarket can affect how and what you buy. If you prefer baskets to shopping carts, you're more prone to impulse searches. That's what a study published by the Journal of Marketing Research claims. It happens due to the effort you put in actually carrying the items around. Choosing a shopping cart will most likely make you comfortable enough to browse through enough products and read labels thoroughly. When your grocery list is not too big, go for the self-checkout aisle if available. Studies have shown that impulse purchases are lowered by up to 32% if you actually scan your own items on the way out. That's because the regular checkout line is specially designed to keep you from letting go of any items you might have reconsidered buying. There's literally nowhere you can put down your undesired products outside of your grocery cart, and if there's anyone else waiting in line behind you, good luck sliding out. The food arrangement on the shelves can also pose a threat to both your budget and your habits. Since people are more inclined to buy the items they see first, the most expensive products are placed at eye level, and the budget options are placed on the top and bottom shelves. Take your time and scan your aisles of interest you'll be surprised to see that most items placed on higher or lower shelves are often not only more cost-effective, but also less packed with additives or artificial flavoring. 
Hey, be careful. It's a jungle in there. You're hiking the Point Reyes National Seashore, and you bump into a mountain lion. Stay calm. You need to show it that you're not scared. Shout loudly at the lion. Wave your arms. If that doesn't work, start throwing rocks, branches, or anything else you can get your hands on. Aim at the ground in front of the lion. Never throw anything directly at it. That will only make it angrier. If the lion is getting closer, protect your most vulnerable spots. It will aim for the neck and try to grab your arms. So tilt your head forward and protect your neck. And don't make sweeping arm movements. When the lion realizes that you're not an easy opponent, it will probably back off and run away. You're in Yellowstone. Here you have to come face to face with the grizzly bear. It's drinking water from a creek. A safe distance is 200 feet. The grizzly has spotted you. It stands on its hind legs and looks in your direction. Now it's about the height of an average basketball player and it weighs almost 800 pounds. So you don't stand a chance to win. You have to freeze in place. Grizzlies have poor eyesight, so it just might not see you. But then it starts walking in your direction. Don't turn your back to it and don't even try to run as fast as you can. It will chase you. You need to seem bigger than you really are. Wave your arms and spread your legs a little wider. Always talk and shout at the bear. It will understand that you're not a humble deer. Try to make a clanking sound of metal. If you have food with you, don't throw it at the bear. Just put it on the ground and keep backing away while facing the bear. If it starts running towards you, your only chance is to fall to the ground and freeze. Bears aren't scavengers, so if it thinks you're not alive, it'll just sniff you, shrug, and walk away. Now you go diving on the Florida coast. You have to protect yourself from the great white shark. Never wear shiny and blinging jewelry when swimming. It attracts sharks. And never swim at night. This is when they go out looking for food. Lots of splashing water can also attract this marine predator. But if the shark swims towards you anyway, the rule here is one, do everything in your power to defeat it. Try to stay calm and swim to the shore. If the shark chooses you as food, there's only one thing that can scare it off. Try to punch the shark in the nose, eyes, or gills. Now you're in Africa. Here in the tall grass of the savanna, you see a lion, and worse, it sees you. The first thing you need to do is maintain eye contact. Don't turn your back to the lion and don't run. This eight-foot predator, weighing like three adults, is running at you at the speed of a car on the highway. But then it stops abruptly and continues to stare at you. Lions often make fake charges to frighten their opponent. At this point, you have to appear much bigger than you really are. Spread your arms and make loud noises. Then the lion can make another fake charge. And if you keep standing still, the lion will realize you're a strong opponent and go the other way. The female lion is way more dangerous than the male one. If it's guarding the babies, it won't stop and you won't stand a chance. Your safari jeep takes you to the next location. You see elephants peacefully drinking water. These guys can be 10 feet tall and weigh as much as two SUVs. They can even flip cars over with their powerful tusks. And now, one of them sees you and wags its big ears. It's bluffing. With those ears, the elephant wants to appear bigger and scare you away. It's also scared and won't run at you all the way. You must let the elephant know you're not threatening it. Don't yell or wave your arms. Take slow steps back until you leave the elephant's personal space. If it runs at you with ears to its head, it's not bluffing. Climbing a tree isn't a good option right now. It might ram the tree and you'll fall down. It might even tilt the tree with its strong trunk. You need to run in a zigzag pattern. The elephant is heavy and it's hard for it to change directions quickly. So gradually, you'll start to pull away from it. But still remember that an elephant can run 25 miles per hour. So you'll unlikely escape from it. Now let's move on to the Nile River. It has the largest number of crocodiles in the world. If you are camping, take a distance of at least 160 feet from the shore. This way, the crocodile will not stumble upon your camp at night. Never take your eyes off the crocodile. It can take advantage of that moment and take you by surprise. Their top speed is only 10 miles per hour, but they can make charges at 40 feet per second from the water. So the only chance to survive is to stay out of the water. If not, the crocodile's weak points are the eyes, the tip of the nose, and the membrane in the throat. This membrane prevents water from entering the crocodile's throat. When running away from a crocodile, be careful not to bump into a hippopotamus. This is one of the most dangerous animals in the world. They can be the size of a business class car and weigh as much as a big elephant. And they can run as fast as horses, so they're sure to outrun you in a sprint. The main thing is to not frighten it. If you're standing far away, get its attention with a loud sound. Usually they will try to get away from you. Use this moment to back away too. But if you see a hippo yawning, it's a sign that you're violating its comfort zone. They can open their mouth at 180 degrees and have the bite force of a crocodile. So you can't beat it and have to run. 
The best option is to climb a tree or some kind of slope. Hippos have a hard time climbing high places, and if you manage to escape, you'd be one of the few people who survived a face-to-face -face encounter with a hippo. There's also buffaloes living here in the savanna. They can be as tall as an adult and weigh a whole ton. And unlike lions and elephants, they don't make a fake charge. If you see this machine running at you, it definitely has evil intentions. Their powerful horns and skull can bend sheets of metal. They can turn a new car into a pile of scrap metal. You can never outrun a buffalo, so your only option is to find the nearest tree and run to it before the buffalo even starts its charge. If you run into a snake, you need to freeze in place. There are endless species of snakes, and you don't know if your opponent is venomous or not. So you definitely need to avoid getting bitten. Make smooth and slow backward movements. If the snake is following you, stop and start stomping your feet. The strong vibrations of the ground should scare it away. If the snake bit you anyway, try to remember exactly what it looked like. Better yet, take a picture of it. To neutralize the venom, you need to take an antidote to the specific venom of that species of snake. You're on your way to Northeast Asia. As you're going through the dense jungle, you see a clearing. Several wild boars are peacefully grazing there. One of them is a female with several children. It'll do anything to protect them, so it's especially aggressive now. Oops, it spotted you. Get ready to defend yourself. If the wild boar is making high-pitched, piercing cries, it's going to strike you. The first thing you need to do is to stay calm and stand still. You have a good chance that the boar will go on its way, but you see it starting to run. And now you have several options. A, you can run away. B, you can face the blow. And C, climb the nearest tree. The first option is wrong. Wild boars can run almost as fast as Usain Bolt, and when it catches up to you, its sharp tusks won't leave you a chance. Option B, stay where you are. Wrong. A wild boar can weigh as much as a motorcycle and be almost as long as an adult. A hit at 25 miles per hour will just knock you down. So the correct option is to climb the nearest tree. If there's no trees, then climb a car or a tall rock. You have to be in a higher position than the boar. When it realizes it can't reach you, it'll leave you alone. The most important thing is to stay away from wild boars. Never try to feed them or provoke them. You wake up in the middle of the night from the feeling as if someone's peering at you from the darkness. You open your eyes and see... Oh, hi, Biscuit. It's your pet hamster that you took in just yesterday. It's sitting right before you. And there's something primal about it. Suddenly, the hamster stands up on his hind legs and howls like a wolf, only much higher, like a whistle. Then, Biscuit scampers to the window, takes one last look at you, and jumps out into the street. What in the world was that? Calm down, it's just that what you took for a hamster was really a werewolf mouse. Or simply, grasshopper mouse. It's a perfect hunter. It's agile, quick, and doesn't feel pain. The mouse lives in North America and doesn't like digging holes. Why work if you can drive the owners out of their homes? This cute ball of fuzz preys on grasshoppers, snakes, and spiders. But most of all, it loves dangerous prey. Arizona bark scorpions are extremely venomous, but our cutie here, he doesn't care. Over millions of years of evolution, the rodent learned to process scorpion neurotoxins into an energy drink. The venom is, for this mouse, like 100 cups of coffee for you. Plus, it helps you not feel pain. The more venom in the mouse's body, the more it looks like a Viking gone berserk. After the battle, the rodent raises its head into the night sky and howls. The sound is more like a whistle, but loud. If the animal howled in the center of a soccer field, you'd hear it from the stands. This way, the mouse makes itself known and tells everyone, I'm in charge here, so don't you dare cross me. You don't believe? <laughs> Ask the poor scorpion. So when you woke up in your room, your mouse was singing a victory song. It may have just chased away a poisonous insect that had infiltrated your room. Nature took pity on humanity and made the grasshopper mouse small. But if you see one close by, then get out of there quickly. It means the werewolf mouse is hunting and there's a scorpion somewhere near. Mouse cubs, even in captivity, remain aggressive. They're like the Spartan children of antiquity. From the first days of life, 
they're ready to fight. Imagine that you got a job in a company creating our planet. You come to the office and your boss says, Newbie, I need a project on a new animal on my desk tonight. Beside yourself, you tried a bit too hard, and the result was the platypus. The animal is covered with soft fur. It's got a tail like a beaver's, flippers, and a duck's bill. The platypus lays eggs, but it feeds its young with milk. <laughs> You've got a crazy imagination. Male platypuses have venomous spurs on their hind legs. The venom isn't dangerous to humans, but you still better avoid petting the animal. If it stings you with those spurs, then a week of severe pain is guaranteed. What animal has the nastiest temperament on the planet? That's easy, a honey badger. Most of all, it resembles a skunk that visits the wrestling gym five times a week. And it smells like that too. The honey badger weighs as much as a two-year-old child, but it's not afraid of anyone. It doesn't care who's confronting it, be it a venomous snake, two lions, or a pack of hyenas. It'll attack them and win. You want honey? No problem. Befriend a badger and it'll demolish a beehive for you. It's not afraid of stings. The honey badger has thick skin that's difficult to break through and also sharp claws and strong jaws. The honey badger scares everyone in Africa, but it's got cousins in North America and Eurasia. Those guys have a bad temper too. Although it's difficult to call it a giant, wolverines will not hesitate to attack a bear or an elk. The animal grows no larger than a medium-sized dog. If you offended it, then I don't envy you. It's hardy, knows how to swim, and is a fast runner. Wide paws are like snowshoes and don't allow it to fall into the snow. You can't hide from a wolverine on a tree either. It climbs with uncanny agility. The wombat is a cute animal that resembles a fluffy bear. It's stocky and weighs as much as a German shepherd. The wombat lives in Australia where it digs deep holes and has the most original protection in the world. If the enemy tries to get into its underground house, the wombat blocks the entrance with its, um, backside. This part of the body consists of four fused bones. For a wombat, it's sort of a shield, and it's difficult for a predator to bite through it. The animal is peaceful, but it has poor eyesight, and, well, it isn't very smart. If it thinks you're posing a threat, it will attack. The Indian Grey Mongoose is a real champion when it comes to fighting cobras. During the fight, it's beautiful and dances so fast that the snake doesn't have time to react to tricks. The cobra gets tired and decides to run away as soon as possible. The animal is protected from cobra fangs by its thick fur and immunity to cobra venom. Mongooses are relatives of cats and are popular pets in India. The animals love to sit on their owner's lap, but retain a wild character. In nature, mongooses rarely attack people, but if cornered, they become unpredictable. Nobody knows how many rats there are on the planet exactly, but at least twice as many as us humans. These are amazing animals that can laugh, dream, and feel stress. They live in packs and can hunt prey dozens of times larger than themselves. Scientists have found rat bite marks on the ribs of dinosaurs that are 75 million years old. They also have kings. They don't wear crowns though. It's the name for several rats whose tails are tied in a knot. The largest king ever recorded consisted of 32 animals. Possums have been around since the days of the dinosaurs. Their acting skills help them survive to this day. As soon as danger appears nearby, this hero rarely rushes into the fray, but it doesn't run away either. It falls to the ground and starts, well, playing possum. It doesn't move at all and even slows down its breath and heartbeat. I'm sure this animal deserves an Oscar. For realism, this actor releases a scent. It's so bad that predators would rather stay hungry than approach a possum. 
the animal has no control over its acting ability. It's a natural response to stress. Possums aren't aggressive, but if cornered, they growl. Their fur stands on end, and they show their teeth. Small, but razor sharp. You won't call the Selenodon a nice guy. You can recognize it by red hair, a Pinocchio nose, and a hairless long tail. It's got sharp teeth, and special glands in its mouth make its saliva toxic. Surprisingly, the animal has no immunity against its own venom. That's why it's really careful while grooming. Selenodons are aggressive by nature. If it gets bored, it gets angry, grunts like a pig, and can lunge at anyone in the vicinity. Luckily, its toxic saliva isn't harmful to humans. The pygmy gerboa is the smallest rodent on Earth. It looks like a baby kangaroo and weighs a little more than a penny. The largest is the capybara, and it's difficult to look at without a smile. But this isn't the limit. Millions of years ago, a rodent the size of an African buffalo lived on the planet. Fulberomys ate plants and resembled both a hippo and an overgrown guinea pig at the same time. Now, the next animal would easily win the first prize for the most unusual rodent on the planet. This monster is a naked mole rat. And yes, it's naked and lives underground. Its appearance is too much, even for a rodent. Most of all, the mole rat looks like a sausage from a horror movie. But that's not the point. On average, a rodent of this size lives for two to three years. Naked mole rats live in the wild for 30 years. Imagine if people could live to be a thousand years old. For a rodent, 30 is pretty much the same. Scientists believe that perhaps this unsightly digger will help humanity solve the problem of aging. One family can have up to 300 naked mole rats. In the concrete hard African soil, they dig cities the size of six football fields. People don't meet these rats. They rarely come to the surface and drink no water. These rodents get moisture from plant roots. The holiday spirit comes with holiday decorations. Sparkling lights, garlands, and snow globes are all part of it. Our furry friends like to play with them too. But did you know that this stuff has some hidden dangers? Let's take a closer look at pet safety tips in your household, both during holiday times and any other time of the year. Number one is tinsel. It's a go-to option to spread a celebration vibe. Tinsel is also known to spread all over the place. You might have noticed this if you trimmed a tree with it. Pets, especially cats, love such decorations. Yet, if they eat a piece of tinsel, it can cause intestinal problems, not to mention emotional effects. The consequences can cost a lot money-wise, too. Surgery to remove a foreign object can cost hundreds of dollars. Don't underestimate the appeal of a shiny object in the room, and keep your eye on your pets. Number two is decorative lights. Once you're done, you put them in the box, and they spend the whole year there, tangled. When you open the box next year, you'll have a hard time untangling them. But while you're unpacking, your pets can eat the lights or get an electric shock. To avoid this, you can bundle up loose cords with protective plastic covers and hang the lights in places your pets can't easily reach. Some people have a snow globe collection. They get these balls as souvenirs from tourist places they go to. Others take them out of a box with holiday decorations at certain times of the year. These fragile things can easily break. Don't ask me how I know this. Some snow globes contain ingredients that are hazardous not only to pets, but also to younger family members. Numerous veterinary sources are full of the same warning. Keep your pets away from snow globes. That being said, the liquid inside snow globes might not be just pure water. It often contains 2% ethylene glycol, and it turns out it has a sweet smell that can lure pets to taste it. Number four is about Christmas trees and how they can turn into pet-friendly decor. Vets say that artificial trees and garlands can be safer than real ones. These trees don't carry the outdoor scent with them, so smell-wise, they don't attract your pets that much. 
Here, the important part is not to buy a flocked or snow-covered artificial tree. These sprinkles, again, can be harmful to pets. If you're not into buying artificial trees, you can attach a fishing line to the tree and hang it on the ceiling to stabilize it. As for the water for the tree, your pet might want to taste it. It's best not to add aspirin or other things to this water. You can cover the reservoir with foil to keep your animals away. Lastly, you can temporarily put a large water bowl in the same room as the tree. If your pet gets thirsty, they can go to their bowl instead of the reservoir. You can consider putting a barrier in front of the tree to make it less accessible. Ah, but some cats are wild. They'll just take it as a challenge, and they'll easily get over most obstacles. Yet, most of them don't want to bother with double-sided sticky tape. You can try that. When I talked about snow globes, it included magnets, too. I wonder whether magnets can be dangerous for pets. We use them for various purposes in our homes. For starters, with their help, we showcase our photos or notes on the fridge door. Our four-pawed friends can easily get their paws on it. These fridge magnets might not be as harmful as so-called rare earth magnets, though. Neodymium magnets, for example, are the real danger. These kinds of magnets are very powerful. If you accidentally pinch your body parts, they can injure you. Imagine these magnets as warriors. When they get too close to each other, they can strike with a super force to chip and shatter regular magnets. You wouldn't want that type of magnet near your pets or little members of your family. Rare earth magnets are normally used in stuff like hard disks, locks for doors, or headphones. But they're also used as toys. These magnets aren't especially toxic. So if your dog accidentally eats one of them, the magnet may leave its body in a natural way. But what if it eats two super powerful magnets? I don't want to get into the details of this scenario. The intestines loop back and forth in the abdomen, and if these magnets get too close to each other, yeah. Apparently, pennies made later than 1982 are also hazardous. They contain high levels of zinc. You might think, isn't zinc an essential mineral for our body? Yes, for growth, wound healing, and many more aspects. Yet, the body needs a small amount of zinc. Too much can cause poisoning. Zinc is found in many metal objects, such as bolts, zippers, and jewelry. If you live in the U.S., you should know that pennies minted after 1982 have zinc cores covered in copper plating. One of the most common causes of zinc poisoning in pets is these pennies. Household plants and flower bouquets can also be dangerous. Let's say you have a bouquet of tulips that you want to keep, and your cat looks so funny trying to push the vase off the table. You shouldn't let curiosity get the best of your cat. Aloe vera, Daphne, Daylily, oh, the list is long. The moral of the story is, kittens are curious and shouldn't eat plants or flowers because they can be toxic for their fluffy bodies. The next one is batteries. The acidic material inside them can leak if they get blasted. Imagine your dog chewing them accidentally. Severe consequences and immediate surgery would be the next step. When I say batteries, I also mean stuff like remotes, watches, and hearing aids. They're also powered by batteries. The next item on the list is food. Yeah, I know how hard it can be sometimes to eat while your pet gives you the look. I want to taste that too! Give me a bite, human, please! Okay, allow me to explain the dangers so that you can resist the temptation to share your food with your bestie. Avocado is toxic to birds and rabbits. Apple seeds and almonds are bad for hamsters. One myth is that rabbits eat lettuce, but in reality, you shouldn't include some types of lettuce in their diet. For example, iceberg lettuce. It contains lacticarium. It can be harmful if your animal eats too much of it. Another myth is that cats should drink milk. Nope. Cow's milk is not good for cats because, surprise, most cats are lactose intolerant. Chocolate, garlic, grapes, and raisins can also be dangerous to pets. How toxic something is depends on several factors, like the species of your pet and how much of the potentially harmful thing the animal has eaten. At the end of the day, you know your pet better than anyone. You probably already know how long it takes them to visit their litter box or how it smells. So always be prepared. 
Watch your pet's behavior. Do they have a decreased appetite? It's best to play it safe. When I say pets, I picture animals like dogs, cats, and hamsters. But some people have exotic pets, such as bears, owls, or crocodiles. The Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries believes that 5,000 tigers are held by people in the United States alone. This number includes zoos, but the majority of them live with private owners. Mountain lions are also commonly seen among exotic pets. Maybe this is why from time to time, we encounter news telling us that something went wrong with private owners of wild animals. Do you have a pet? If you do, what's their name? Why not let us know in the comments? Who do you think will win? A hungry grizzly or a ripe berry? An angry tiger or a beautiful flower? A huge python or a green bush? The answer's not so obvious. Now you'll see who really controls the jungle and forests. Meet the most dangerous plants on Earth. This is the water hemlock. It grows in North America in swampy areas of fields and meadows. Also, you can find this plant on the shores of rivers and streams. It seems harmless, but it's one of the most poisonous plants in the U.S. Water hemlock toxins can cause critical damage to an adult in 15 minutes, but only if you swallow it. Many people mistakenly confuse it with artichoke, celery, and anise. Despite the dangerous poison, water hemlock is used to cure migraines and intestinal diseases. This plant has caused a lot of damage to livestock. White snake root grows in fields and pastures. When a cow bites it, the plant releases a fat-soluble toxin. This poison gets not only inside the animal, but also into the milk. Young calves who drink the milk also become infected. Poisoned milk is also dangerous for people. The problem is that this plant, native to North America, is one of the longest-lived autumn flowers. Now in modern farms, the poison of this plant is not so dangerous. But on small private pastures, white snake root is the number one danger. We all know two kinds of beans, the ones we eat and the ones that Jack used to get to the realm of giants. In addition to them, there are poisonous ones. These are called castor beans. They contain one of the most dangerous toxins in the world, ricin. As soon as it enters your body, it blocks the production of proteins necessary for life. Without these proteins, your cells stop functioning. The more cells are destroyed, the more your body suffers. The castor bean releases ricin when squeezed. Several beans can cause dehydration, weakness, hallucinations, seizures, and other problems. About seven beans are enough to cause critical damage. So remember what they look like and never touch them if you see them in the woods. One of the most beautiful plants on the planet is also one of the most dangerous. This is oleander. Everything is poisonous in it. The stem, the root, and the pink flower. Even a tiny piece of this plant can lead to severe poisoning. It doesn't need to get inside your stomach to create severe problems. Just a little touch to the juice of the flower causes allergies. And don't try to burn it, as the smoke of a burning oleander has toxic effects too. And now, the most dangerous plant in the world. One touch of it will hurt you for several years. Or you may feel the consequences all your life. The Gimpy Gimpy plant, also called the Queensland Stinger, looks like an ordinary burdock bush. It doesn't look like anything poisonous at all. But if you stand next to this plant, you'll feel suffocation and watery eyes. There are thousands of tiny poisonous hairs on the leaves of this flower. They're so light, they can hang in the air and spread by the wind. So you should put on a gas mask if you want to look at the plant. But if you lightly touch Gimpy Gimpy, you're in big trouble. Some compare one Gimpy Gimpy sting to 30 wasp stings at the same time. Poisonous hairs easily penetrate under your skin and cause irritation and pain. The problem is that you can't pull them out. Wash with soap and water, use some disinfecting ointment, and you'll see that the situation is only worsening. The hairs can't be pulled out of there. They sit there, releasing toxins and driving you crazy. There's no antidote because scientists still don't know what components the toxin consists of. 
It can withstand cold and hot temperatures. Unpleasant sensations can last for several hours, days, or even months. People who touched the plant said that the pain from the sting returned even after a few years. But if it's impossible to get rid of the hairs, then the only way out is to wait for them to lose their toxicity. But there's another problem here. You can tear off one gimpy gimpy leaf with gloves and put it in the laboratory, dry it, and forget about it for a few years. And here it lies in front of you, a withered, almost destroyed leaf. It seems harmless, but it's not. Even after many years, the poisonous hairs remain on the leaf surface and still cause toxin effects. Gimpy Gimpy only grows in Australia. It loves the sun and dense green forests. It used to pose a severe danger to tourists and loggers. But now, all places with this plant are marked with a warning sign. At botanical exhibitions, scientists put this plant in a cage so people wouldn't touch it. Rosary peas can be white seeds with a black eye or black seeds with a white eye. You can find these plants in Africa, Asia, Australia, and the Pacific Ocean region. Some species were transported to Florida and Hawaii by people. You could encounter this plant even on city streets. Rosary pea seeds are used in jewelry and some toys. People who wear rosary pea bracelets probably don't know about its seeds toxicity. Rosary peas, as well as the castor bean, contribute to the destruction of cells. Interestingly, rosary pea seeds are used not only as decorations, but also for healing certain health conditions. This is the only poisonous plant from the list that looks poisonous. You probably won't want to pick it up when you notice it. See this red stem that looks more like an artery or an enlarged nervous system? And those berries are similar to eyes. Doll's eye looks a little creepy. Their internal structure is also as unpleasant as their appearance. Doll's eye has a dangerous toxin. The longer they grow, the more poisonous their composition gets. Doll's eye chemicals have a sedative effect on muscles and hearts. This means that your body relaxes so much that it stops working. You've probably seen this plant in reality or wildlife movies. Venus flytraps are rare representatives of carnivorous plants. Fortunately, they're not as dangerous for humans as for insects. But in any case, you shouldn't stick your finger in them. So here's how they work. The plant opens its mouth. There's a red petal with a fragrant smell in its middle. It's a decoy. A fly or some beetle notices this and decides to try it. They climb inside the flower. But the Venus flytrap doesn't immediately get closed. Tiny sensitive hairs inside the plant count the movements of the fly. If the fly has made more than two movements within 20 seconds, the plant closes its mouth in less than a second. This interval prevents the Venus flytrap from needlessly slamming when some garbage lands there. Then the fly becomes trapped. The bristles on the plant's jaws work like a cage. Prey cannot escape. Then the Venus flytrap injects digestive juice into its mouth, which destroys the fly. Five to 12 days later, the plant opens again and waits for a new lunch. The Venus flytrap can eat flies, beetles, spiders, and even little frogs. Giant hogweed causes the most extensive damage among all plants. It's dangerous not specifically for one person, but for entire forests and fields. Giant hogweed is an invasive plant. It's like a parasite. It multiplies quickly and destroys all other flowers in the area. Insects don't feed on giant hogweed. It's also problematic for people to destroy it, since giant hogweed causes an allergic reaction on the skin. It grows quickly, it's immune to poisons, and lives long. Giant hogweed can reach the height of a one-story house and be deeply rooted in the ground. It releases its seeds, and a light breeze spreads them for miles. Scientists still can't create an effective way to combat it. There's nothing that can defeat giant hogweed in nature. Well, not yet. Nature and evolution always find a balance. Sharks, octopuses, whales, giant squids. They're all fantastic and often dangerous creatures living in the ocean. 
But all of them are not as cool as these two fellas, the mantis shrimp and the snapping shrimp. They have some of the most incredible superpowers among all animal kingdoms. Hey, check this out! One of the coolest features of the mantis shrimp is its eyes. No other creature has such a unique structure of its visual organ. Each eye has several pupils that constantly change their shape. They can move separately and together, focus on some small objects, and see the big picture at the same time. These eyes are several times cooler than the human eye. And that's why. We have three photoreceptors, red, green, and blue. All other colors we see around are a combination of these three. Dogs have two photoreceptors, green and blue, so they don't see as well as people. Some bird species have all three photoreceptors plus an ultraviolet one. It's difficult for us to imagine how they see the world. Butterflies have five photoreceptors. They also see ultraviolet light and distinguish colors much better than we do. But the mantis shrimp has from 12 to 16 photoreceptors. There's no such technology that would allow you to see the world through their eyes. It's impossible to imagine. Try to come up with a new color. People use their eyes to see the world around them. But the mantis shrimp use their vision for communication with the help of polarized light. To understand what it is, imagine you're holding a rope vertically. If you start shaking it from right to left, the string will take an S shape. Jiggle the rope, and its free end will start moving chaotically. Now, have a look at how 10 ropes will be moving. This is how ordinary light waves work. They move chaotically. Now imagine that there's a pattern in the movement of the ropes. They can only go in a particular direction, up, down, horizontally, and vertically. They can twist like a spiral, move diagonally. But they're doing it at the same time as if it's one rope reflected in dozens of mirrors. Such movements of light waves are called polarized light. You can buy glasses with light polarization and see how it works. There will be less glare, the picture will become more precise and more structured, and your eyes won't get tired so much. There's also light polarization in the ocean. Water molecules reflect light waves simultaneously, and mantis shrimps see it. Some animals use polarization as navigation. They can analyze a light wave coming from an object and use this information to navigate. Imagine rays of light that are spreading in all directions away from your house. You've gone far away, and now you can't even see the building. But the light waves are still there. You follow these waves and get back to the house. Scientists don't know if mantis shrimps use this kind of navigation. Perhaps they need polarized light for their courtship rituals. Modern science still knows little about such complex visual communication. But people have studied another incredible ability of the mantis shrimp. It's super punch. There are many different species of mantis shrimp, but we can simply divide them into two types, spearers and smashers. The first group has sharp front claws with notches at the end. The second one has claws in the form of a mace. With the help of these claws, mantis shrimps throw the fastest punch among all animals on Earth. The punch is so fast that it's almost impossible to notice it. Only cameras with powerful lenses can capture the hit. First, the creature aims with its unique eyes. Then it moves forward lightning fast and attacks its enemy with its front claws. It's almost impossible to dodge such a punch. A mantis shrimp can easily destroy a hermit crab's armor or the shell of a crayfish. And you can even hear the impact sound coming from the aquarium filled with water. It sounds like a coin hitting the floor. If the glass wall of the aquarium is too thin, a mantis shrimp can break it. They can do this thanks to their ability to store energy, as well as a complex system of biological springs in their muscles. Their claws have special latches that lock them. When the energy is accumulated, the mantis shrimp releases it. At the moment of the impact, the water around starts to boil. Mantis shrimps aren't afraid of anything. They easily fight octopuses, fish, and even people. Mantis shrimps are fast, agile, strong, and aggressive. Oh, and by the way, they're neither shrimps nor mantises. Scientists call them like that because they're similar to these animals. But how is it possible that their claws remain intact during such forceful strikes? Scientists have recently discovered that the shrimp's shell is covered with unique nanoparticles structured like fish scales. During the punch, the energy is dispersed evenly across these particles. Sometimes the shield structure can collapse, but a mantis shrimp doesn't care since its shell recovers after a while. Take a marshmallow and squeeze it for a second. See how it restores its form? 
nanocrystals on the mantis shrimp claws work similarly. When this creature hunts, it digs a hole in the seabed and hides among reef and algae. When its dinner appears, mantis shrimp immediately reads the distance and size of the target with its eyes. Then it swims up to its future meal, fast as a rocket. There are lots of videos on the internet where mantis shrimps hunt crayfish with solid shells. They simply rip apart their protection as if it's made of crystal. Another incredible creature is the snapping shrimp. This is a real cowboy of the underwater world. It's small, only a few inches long, and has two claws of different sizes. One helps it grab food and other objects. The second claw is bigger. It's half the size of the shrimp's body. Its main feature is the ability to release powerful bursts of energy. Look, a snapping shrimp is hiding inside a coral reef. A fish that is several times bigger is swimming by. The shrimp lifts its claws and fires a bubble. Its speed is 60 miles per hour, equal to the average speed of cars on the highway. Such an attack throws the fish away. To better understand how much energy the shrimp releases, you need to check the sound it creates. The volume of the snap can reach up to 210 decibels. The explosion of the firecracker is several times quieter. A jet plane has about 140 decibels. You can put your head in the water and hear the clicking. The shrimp got its name thanks to this snapping sound. A few clicking shrimps can interfere with the navigation system of a submarine. The creature uses its claws not only to hunt and scare off big enemies. It needs to attract a partner, too. Yes, females choose males with bigger claws. But let's take a closer look at how this animal creates the bubble. The snapping shrimp is rising the upper part of the claw like a shutter. Inside the bend, there's a small gap. The shrimp allows some water to get there. Then it squeezes its claw like a piston. Great pressure displaces the water from the gap, heats it, and turns it into steam. The pressure gets so high that a flash of light is produced. All this happens so fast that a bubble is produced. But it's almost impossible to notice the process with a human eye. It's as if you clap your hands very quickly underwater. The deafening sound and shockwave can scare away or knock out any fish. Now, the second awesome feature of the shrimp is its symbiotic relationship with other forms of marine life. To protect themselves, they cooperate with some fish. Snapping shrimps help their partners, too. Look, a shrimp has come across a small fish. Now they're looking for shelter together. The shrimp starts digging the sand while the fish is on the lookout. If an enemy appears, it signals to the shrimp. The partner clicks and scares away any unwelcome guests. Then, when the burrow is ready, they go hunting together. If a large fish appears, they hide in their new shelter. The shrimp also helps its partner to get food. This is mutually beneficial cooperation. If there was a fight between the mantis shrimp and a snapping shrimp, the first one would win. Its punch is way more powerful than the bubble produced by the snapping shrimp. If a snapping shrimp attacked your hand, you'd feel a slight pressure on your skin, but nothing terrible would happen. But never, ever attempt to touch a mantis shrimp. Fishermen know that these animals can cause severe damage to the body. You can feel the punch even through thick shoes and gloves. There have been many cases when people accidentally stepped on these creatures. There's nothing pleasant about it, believe me. So always check the seabed in the places where they live. And keep in mind that mantis shrimps often hide in shallow water. So watch your step. Ouch! Oh, there's hardly a person who's never been stung by a bee. It's definitely not a pleasant feeling. But bees aren't normally angry creatures. You probably just scared the little guy. These insects are super important for pollination. Their existence is one of the main reasons why our plants keep growing. Bees only sting when they feel threatened. If you get stung, it might mean you've come too close to them. Or, more importantly, that you've come too close to their hive. Each hive can hold between 50,000 to 80,000 honeybees. Just like us humans, bees do everything to protect their home. But instead of alarms and complicated security systems, they use their stingers to ward off enemies. When honeybees sting, they release something called a pheromone. Pheromones are chemical substances that affect the behavior of animals of the same species. If one bee charges at you, the pheromones are likely to stir up all nearby bees, and they will readily join in. That's one meeting you'll definitely want to avoid. Here's a fun fact. It's only female bees that can sting. 
Larger male drone bees don't even have stingers. This is because the stinger is basically a modified egg-laying device. Queen bees also have stingers. These bees are bigger than the average worker. The queen has an average size of just under one inch. It's about twice the size of your regular worker bee. Because of its large size, many people think that the queen bee's sting hurts the most. So let's dive into it. First of all, queen bees rarely sting because of their job in the hive. The queen is the most important bee in the colony, as it's the only female that can reproduce. The queen has two main jobs in the hive. Number one, she produces chemical scents that help unify the rest of the bees so they can work together. Number two, she lays a lot of eggs, up to 2,000 a day. The queen is surrounded by worker bees who meet her every need at all times. They give her food. The attendant workers also collect and then distribute the queen's pheromones, which stops the workers from finding a new queen. But despite being the head of the hive and being much bigger than other bees, the queen's sting is actually the least painful. This is because regular bees have barbed stingers. This means that when they attack, the stinger gets stuck in your skin, making it really difficult to remove. The stinger also contains nasty venom that's packed with proteins. That's what causes the pain and affects your immune system and skin cells. The stinger continues to pump venom into your body for more than 10 minutes or until it gets removed. But unlike workers, queen bees leave the hive very rarely. Their main job is to lay eggs, and it's down to the rest of the colony to protect the hive and the queen. That's why worker bees are the ones with the most powerful sting. This is how they can ward off potential dangers. The only reason the queen would really need to defend herself is against rival queens. Because of this, the queen has no need to develop a nasty stinger. Hers is instead a lot smoother. This means that the barbs don't get stuck in your skin, which can be mega uncomfortable. While this might sound good, it does come with a bit of bad news. Because of the smoothness of its stinger, the queen can jab you multiple times. The stinger is attached to the bee's digestive tract, nerves, and muscles, all of which are essential for the bee to function normally. When workers sting, they're unable to pull their stinger out because of the barbs. And when they try to get free, it doesn't end well for them. But the queen's stinger doesn't get stuck. That's why the bee doesn't feel any negative consequences. And still, she'll basically only sting you if she doesn't have one of her bodyguards nearby, which is highly unlikely. So what's the worst place to be stung by a bee? A man called Michael Smith decided to find out. He got stung on 25 different body parts and rated each prick on a pain scale between 1 and 10. He found out that the most tender area was the nostrils, scoring a 9 out of 10, followed by the upper lip, which he estimated as an 8.7. The three least painful locations were the skull, middle toe tip, and upper arm. All of these scored a 2.3. But moving back to the queen, how does a regular bee gain this title? The queen bee rarely needs replacing, as she can live for a whopping five years. At the same time, a worker bee born in the summer usually only survives for about six weeks. But if the queen passes away or moves to another hive, the colony needs to replace her. Doing this requires something called royal jelly, which nurse bees produce in their heads. They feed it to newly hatched honeybee larvae. It's basically a superfood that contains loads of useful stuff, including vitamin B, proteins, hormones, and sugars. After feeding baby bees for three days, workers select just a few larvae and continue giving them the royal jelly. The others will have a less nutritional diet. The royal jelly triggers new phases of development for these growing bees. And one of the most important is growing special organs they need to lay eggs. But people still don't fully understand how this process works. Some scientists say that it's not the royal jelly itself that causes a bee to turn into a queen. They think it's the exclusion of other natural plant-based chemicals from the queen's diet. But even though we aren't 100% sure how these special bees appear, we do know why there's just one queen in the end. When the first queen emerges, she searches for the other bees who've been fed the same royal jelly. And then she wipes out the competition. If several queens emerge at the same time, it's time to grab your popcorn. 
They'll hunger games it out in a dramatic fight until only one remains. And that's how bees get their queen. Other bees in the hive also have important jobs. These include foraging for food, tending to young larvae, and building a honeycomb. Drones, or male bees, have one singular job. They mate with the queen. And when they're not trying to mate, they eat from honey reserves and do pretty much nothing. Female bees, or worker bees, do everything else. They keep the hive clean, take care of larvae, tend to the queen, store honey, build cells, forage, guard the nest, pollinate, and even feed male bees. Each bee knows exactly what job to do. That's because their specific hormones activate parts of their genetic makeup that tell them what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. Bees have four job phases in their lifetime. Phase one starts about three weeks after they get born. That's when they get to work cleaning the cells from which they've emerged. Three days later, they enter phase two. In this phase, they're in charge of feeding other bees. This lasts for about a week. Then they enter phase three. They move further away from the hive center and become handy helpers. They build the honeycomb and guard the hive's entrance. This period also lasts for around a week. After that, they enter the fourth and final phase, the foraging stage. It's definitely the most dangerous part of our stripy friends' lives. This is where they leave the nest, look for pollen, bring it home, and feed the colony. They also leave a stinky footprint on the flowers they touch when collecting pollen. This way, they can figure out if their bee relatives have been here or if it's been a stranger. Sometimes they discover their own footprints. <laughs> Unbelievable! This phase doesn't last very long though, only around 10 days, as it makes bees super tired. After such a short life where they work non-stop, worker bees then leave the hive to never return. At the same time, if a worker passes away inside the hive, special undertaker bees carry this bee out. But while bees' lives may be short, this pattern seems to be working out quite well for the species. After all, they've been around for over a whopping 130 million years and counting. No, you couldn't help yourself. You snap a vacation selfie with your fingers in a peace sign and post it to your social media. It gets you likes, comments, all that good stuff. The next day, someone breaks into your banking app. Someone just stole your identity, all thanks to that innocent little selfie. The peace sign first became popular about 70 years ago. Back then, no one could have imagined it could cost you all your precious personal data. Nowadays, you can use your fingerprint to unlock your smartphone, tablet, and laptop. If someone can get your fingerprint, they can get access to basically everything. Japanese researchers managed to scan and copy fingerprints from a photo taken about 9 feet away. Normal quality, fingerprints in focus, and some good lighting. That's all it takes, apparently. The better the image quality, the easier it is. So if you have one of the latest phones, you're in a high-risk zone. Any old 3D printed finger won't unlock a phone, though. Most newer models have fingerprint readers with tiny electrical circuits. When they come into contact with the ridges on your real fingers, they recreate your fingerprint pattern. Human skin is conductive, and 3D printer ink isn't. But scientists found a way around it. They used an inkjet 2D printer, conductive ink with tiny metallic particles in it, and regular paper. And it worked. Your fingerprint data is really valuable because it's more vulnerable than any password you might have. If something weird happens, like you get a suspicious email or text, you can just change any password you want in a few minutes. But you can't exactly download a new fingerprint. How would that even work? When someone gets access to your fingerprint, there's big money involved. Unfortunately, it's your money. Cyber bad guys can get rich off that kind of data. You probably use your thumb to log into apps, including your banking ones. That's your money and personal info up for grabs to the highest bidder. If someone gets access to your health records, they can order expensive equipment in your name and resell it later. Or they can just go to the doctor or dentist for free. The good news is, scientists are on it. They've invented a clear sticker that has a fake finger vein pattern imprinted on it. It'll stop people from stealing your identity, but still let you use your fingerprint to unlock your gadgets. 
is still a work in progress, though. Another option is called liveness detection. After your phone reads your fingerprint, it asks you to nod, wink, or smile. That way, the phone knows the fingerprint's attached to you, a real person. There's no way to fake that. If you rock the peace sign every chance you get, you might want to come up with a new signature move. That's the hang loose, the double thumbs up, and that awesome one where you put your chin between your thumb and your index finger. Or just keep it up, but disable the fingerprint reader on your phone. If you choose to do that, you'll need to be 10 times more careful about your passwords. Get creative when you answer those security questions, the ones they ask you when you forget your password. If someone's after your data, they can easily find out the name of your elementary school, your mother's maiden name, your favorite food or pet. Don't make it so easy. You can write your answers in backwards or just give funny wrong answers that you'll easily remember. Just in general, share as little information about yourself as you can online. In case you have your pet's name as a password, 1. Change it. 2. If you have to keep it, don't share pics of your pet's collar and name tag. The best passwords are, and always will be, random mixtures of letters and numbers. You can also use a password manager to create a stronger password. If your bank or insurance company asks you to provide some additional personal information by email, double-check with them. Call them, ask them if they really need it. Read the email carefully. Fake ones often have spelling or grammar mistakes, even if the email address seems pretty legit. When you're putting in your payment data to buy something online, make sure there's a padlock symbol before the web page address. That means it's protected from any bad guys out there. Don't share your full date of birth on social media. And watch out for those online quizzes that make their way around the internet. They don't really need to know where you went to school. Don't post photos that have your boarding pass, password, driver's license, credit card, or anything else with personal information on it. Even if it's just casually lying there in the background, bad guys can zoom in on it. If you don't want the rest of the world to know your exact address, turn off the location function in your camera settings on your phone. If you really want to keep the location info to organize your photos better, you can manually remove the geotag from photos you want to post online. On an iPhone, select one or several photos to post and tap the Share button. Then choose Options at the top of the screen. Toggle off the All Photos data in the next screen that opens. On a Mac, open Photos, then General Preferences. Uncheck the Include Location Information for Published Items. On an Android, open Gallery, tap the picture you want to take the geotag off, and swipe up on it. Choose Edit, then tap the red minus thing next to the location. Then save the changes. Be careful when you're shopping online during your morning commute to work. Especially if you're driving! Actually, just don't do that. But if you're on a bus or a train, try to position your screen in such a way that no one but you can see it. You don't want a sneaky neighbor to peep over your shoulder and copy your password, credit card details, or shipping address. You can get a special privacy screen protector just to be on the safe side. Don't make any bank transactions while you're using public Wi-Fi. When the network is unsecured, or if the website is unencrypted, you risk all that data going to someone else on the same network. They can even log in with your account. Disable push notifications on your phone, or at least limit what you can see on the lock screen. The name of the app that sent it is enough. Otherwise, when you leave your phone for a moment in a public place or at work, someone can get access to your data. They won't even have to unlock your phone to read the message or notification. Never submit your confidential information over the phone. You could have malware on it that's recording everything you say or sending your data off somewhere. If your phone's working slower than it used to, and you have apps on it you don't remember installing, it might have been tampered with. Malware can also make it onto your phone when you install an app that's not from the official app store. When an app asks you for permission to access every part of your phone, that's another sign it might not be trustworthy. One form of vishing, or voice phishing, is when someone pretends to be a representative over the phone and asks you to provide your data. Always check with your bank, hospital, or whoever they're pretending to be. The real bank or hospital usually won't ask you for sensitive stuff over the phone. 
You might also get a robocall that asks you to contact some phone number to claim a prize. The recording might say you can press a certain button to stop receiving calls from this number. Ignore it. You'll just sign yourself up for more robocalls because they'll know you're a real person. Some bad guys that practice vishing are after your voice. It's as unique as your fingerprint, iris, or DNA. A simple yes or I'm listening can help them generate a sample of your voice. If they get that and some other data from you, they can access more personal data and even pretend to be you over the phone. There are programs nicknamed Photoshop for voice that can change a recording of your voice into something you never really said. So the best thing you can do is hang up without saying a word. When you try to delete something online, you gotta make sure it really gets deleted. There are websites that let you see your long-since-deleted Facebook account with all those old pics you'd rather not share anymore. So, if you're searching for evidence of eternal life, well, there you go. Now, if for some reason you ever, you know, decide to wake up a sleeping giant panda or cuddle it, just remember, that's a bad idea. Even fearless big cats like snow leopards are wary of bothering pandas in the wild. The ones you see in the zoo might not be that active, but they still have a massive jaw that can deliver a powerful bite. Their huge false thumb lets them get a good grip on their enemies. The most misleading thing about the leopard seal is its mouth, which always appears to be smiling. But they're actually rather aggressive animals and effective lone hunters. They like to play cat and mouse with their food, which includes penguins, fish, squid, and even smaller seals. Not so long ago, a leopard seal even dragged a marine biologist deep underwater. Hey, stop playing with your food! Anteaters feed on insects, citrus fruit, and avocados. Watch out! They have no teeth, poor vision, and bad hearing. Sounds kind of like my Uncle Rudy. They aren't aggressive and stay away from people. But if humans walk on their trails, anteaters can turn fierce and may fight. They get on their hind legs, use their tails for balance, and attack with their claws that are strong enough to hurt a jaguar or a land rover. Fluffy alpacas may seem warm-hearted, but they still have ways of defending themselves. They can spit up to 10 feet, and you don't want that stuff getting in your eyes because it contains stomach acid along with chewed up grass. They can bite with their sharp fighting teeth that are at the back of their mouths, and they have soft toes to give enemies a good kick. They can't really do more damage than you might get in a fight with a child, but it's best not to upset them. There are three things that brings out the nasty side of a Tasmanian devil. When there's a predator nearby, when they're competing for a mate, and when they're protecting their meal. Also Bugs Bunny, but that's a cartoon. These guys normally feed on insects, birds, frogs, and fish, and they like scavenging more than hunting. But if you intrude upon their home for any reason, be prepared for a painful bite. Their teeth are strong enough to eat through bones. Elephants are so clever that they understand the feelings of other elephants, and they even try to help each other. They can also take revenge on people who upset them. Elephants sometimes block roads and show up in the villages of people who have been mean to them. Male elephants get especially aggressive when fighting over females. Watch out for those huge feet. They can really do some damage. Better pack your trunk. Puffer fish can inflate to several times their normal size to protect themselves against predators. Hey, my brother-in-law can do that too. Eh, just kidding. Most animals shouldn't try eating them anyways. There's enough poison inside them to finish off 30 people, and there's no antidote. So, if it's just you, you'll need to invite some friends along to spread out the poison. Nah, I just made that up. Swans tend to see humans as the biggest danger to their homes and families. Male swans get especially aggressive during the spring nesting season from April to June. When kayakers, rowers, or anglers get too close to their nests, Swans start hissing and flapping their wings. If you don't pay attention to these warning signs, the swan might even try to flip your boat over. Dolphins are the only species on the planet, apart from humans, that can take another creature's life for no logical reason. Males sometimes attack female dolphins or even baby ones 
and they don't do it for food. If an angry dolphin chases you, you have no chance of outswimming it. They can move at 22 miles per hour. The top speed of Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps is only 6 miles per hour, so he can't help you. Slow lorises are the only venomous primates in the world. They carry poison in their elbows. It's transferred to their mouths during grooming to protect their babies. Plus, they scare off predators like pythons and eagle hawks using special markings that show how fearsome they are. If a slow loris bites a person who ends up on its territory or annoys it, the result can be rashes, anaphylactic shock, or, you know, even worse. Despite their massive weight and clumsy bodies, hippos can run much faster than people. And they have much sharper teeth. If you get in their way on their trip to the watering hole, their aggression kicks in. Before they attack you, though, they'll give you some warning signs. If you see a hippo yawn or make a sound like a laugh, it means it's about to get mad. Well, that's rather confusing, isn't it? Blue-ringed octopuses are really tiny, but their venom is a thousand times stronger than cyanide. They normally use it to hunt shrimp, crabs, and small fish. If this creature feels threatened, it'll flash its blue rings as a warning. If you don't pay attention, it may bite you. You might not notice the bite itself, but minutes later, you'll definitely notice the symptoms. Nausea, numbness, and even the loss of your senses and motor skills. So pay attention down there. Geographic cone snails are a seriously dangerous critter. They puncture their victims with a tooth that's like a harpoon, and then inject their venom. If a small cone attacks you, it'll just feel like a bee sting. If you're unlucky enough to meet a larger one, though, it could cause numbing, swelling, muscle paralysis, changes to your vision, and even breathing difficulties. Canada geese have been living close to humans for years, but they're still wary of us getting near their homes, especially during the spring mating season. At this time, the male geese can chase and bite people that seem like a threat to their mates, eggs, or babies. If you want to avoid being attacked by this seriously angry bird, the best thing you can do is just slowly back away. Squirrels have a lot of enemies, both in the wild and in cities. Their superpower against all of them is their speed and agility. Most of the time, it's completely safe to go near them. But they can still be unpredictable like any wild animal. They go on biting sprees occasionally. And watch out, they carry infections like rabies. They're more likely to go after your pets or kids, but they can also bite adults. So, to play it safe, always walk behind your pets or kids to use them as decoys. Of course I'm kidding. If you ever see a kangaroo get up on its hind legs, back off. This is their way of warning you that they think you're a threat to their females or their food. They are real pros at boxing with each other, and they have really long legs and sharp claws. Kangaroos jump into the air to give extra force to their kicks, which are powerful enough to break bones. A platypus doesn't have teeth, and it mainly eats insects and shellfish. It's one of only two mammals that lay eggs. But these strange things can still do you harm. Male platypuses have sharp spurs hidden on the heels of their hind feet. There's venom in these spurs that's strong enough to take down a dog. Koalas get most of their hydration from eating eucalyptus leaves, and they get all the protection they need from their sharp teeth and claws. When a koala scratches someone that wants to cuddle them a little too hard, they can pass on some unpleasant infections. <laughs> Raccoons can easily adapt to any environment, including your backyard. They rarely attack humans directly, but can damage your property and make you sick. They'll go anywhere to get some food, from trash cans to bird nests. And this is where they can catch a lot of different infections. Apart from disease, raccoons can give humans nasty wounds that take a long time to heal. When it thinks you're threatening its dam, a beaver will start slapping the water with its tail as a warning sign. If you ignore it, it'll try to use its sharp teeth against you to protect its family. So, it's better to just leave it to beaver. Hey, there's a special knife you can use to protect yourself against attack called a beaver cleaver. No wait, that's an old TV show. Otters spend a lot of their time swimming on their backs, 
and they don't care about cleaning up after themselves. That's why they leave behind bits of fish that attract insects carrying diseases. Apart from being so messy, they also have powerful teeth that can be used against any unwanted visitor. Cassowaries are the most dangerous birds on the planet. One of these can weigh as much as an adult person, and it has long, powerful legs and sharp claws. They can chase after you at 30 miles per hour. Luckily enough, they try to avoid fights. But if you don't want to be the target of their karate moves, keep a safe distance and don't provoke them. Got that? Good. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay